U.S. job growth slowing for the month of December. Does this signal declines in other areas of the economy? Let's bring in Chet Anaya, chief economist and a global head of economics at Morgan Stanley here at Post 9. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. I um, want to get your thoughts on the jobs report we got today and what that signals, I guess, more broadly about where the U.S. fits into this global economic picture right now. Um, because I think what's so interesting is we've seen this contraction in manufacturing. We've seen a drop in consumer sentiment and, and in CapEx. And yet, and I realize it was softer than expected, but hiring continues. Yes, absolutely. And the number is not so bad if you look at the fact that the economy is at this levels of low unemployment and the fact that the growth is now supposed to be slowing down to, towards the trend. And we think this is consistent with 1.8, 1.9% GDP growth, which we expect over the next 12 months. So it's not really bad. I think it, it, we're going to continue with this kind of numbers over the next 12 months. Uh, do you expect the biggest swing factor for the U.S. economy to be whether the trade deal is done or not? Or, or is that now already kind of assumed to, to be the case and we've got to look to other factors on the U.S. economy? No, it, it still remains a big important point for the U.S. economy in terms of outlook because we do want to have that investment growth come back into positive territory. If you look at the equipment investments, it's declining year on year right now. And we don't want that to be continuing. We want that number to come back. We want net exports again to come back into positive territory to support the growth, which is going to happen this quarter and probably in the coming quarters too. So we indeed need that support for manufacturing and um, investment to come back to sustain that number of around 1.8, 1.9% GDP growth. When you look at other developed uh, markets, de developed economies, clearly the U.S. has a little bit more flexibility left in terms of monetary policy stimulus if needed versus the negative rates that exist in some places. But they have perhaps a little bit more flexibility when it comes to fiscal stimulus in the year ahead and, and likelihood of that being deployed. How, how do you think about the likely impact of either of those two and, and, and what that means for relative growth rates with the rest of the developed economies? So while, as I mentioned, we're expecting U.S. growth to flatline around 1.8, 1.9, we expect the rest of the world to accelerate quite significantly. And there are three reasons. One of it is because that you mentioned that there is going to be a divergence in the path of fiscal policy in the U.S. versus Europe plus U.K., uh, U.S., we think it will be relatively flat, whether there's going to be a significant fiscal stimulus in U.S., uh, Europe and U.K. At the same time, the other thing which is changing is the trade tensions easing and the fact that the other central banks have eased a lot more, to especially emerging markets. You're going to see a pickup in global manufacturing in a meaningful manner. And the U.S., while it will benefit with its manufacturing coming back, U.S. trade to GDP and manufacturing to GDP is much lower than the other parts of the world. So that's the second factor which will uh, make a difference in terms of the relative growth differential. And the third one is the fact that the U.S. is actually quite much in late cycle, whereas those guys, especially emerging markets, are in the early stages of the business cycle. So that's why we think that the growth differentials will move back into the favor of rest of the world.